I have here in my pulpit the a parallel Bible. This one is the NIV and the Living Bible. And then this one that I received, I, I have a cross that says it's a good news Bible, I have the bad news Bible. This is the one I received in my Presbyterian church when I went through confirmation. This was, this was that fun Bible that they gave me to read because, you know, it's a little bit easier to understand, right? I mean, I was, I was a teenager and the Bible is just real difficult to understand. So they gave me this Bible that says in verse 28, of Deuteronomy 22. Suppose a man is caught raping a girl who is not engaged. He is to pay the girl's father of the bride price of 50 pieces of silver and she is to become his wife. Because he forced her to have intercourse with him, he can never divorce her as long as he lives. Isn't that just so easy to understand now? Isn't it great to hear that God's word now is God's holy law is promoting people when they rape somebody. Now you just got to marry him. Hey, great woman. I just got raped. Now I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person. He can never divorce me. Isn't that good news? That's, that's great news, right? From the good news Bible. The good news of God's law. If a man rapes me, now I have to just spend my rest of my life with him. It's ridiculous. This is trash. The NIV, the new li the, the living version or the, the the living Bible too, same exact thing. It says if a man rapes a girl who is not engaged and is caught in the act, he must pay a fine to the girl's father and marry her, he may never divorce her. That was the living Bible. NIV says, if a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her, and they are discovered, he shall pay the girl's father 50 shekels of silver. He must marry the girl, for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. This is a joke. And this is, you know, when people try to bring up and say, oh yeah, the Bible says that... Uh, if a man rapes a woman, then he has to marry her and they're going to be stay together. And that's, that's what the Bible says. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's what these perversions say. These perverted, twisted words that are not the Bible, that is Satan's attack on God's word, says that garbage. But look at how much damage these beloved versions have brought in the reproach against God's holy commandments. These do. Don't think, oh, it's just a little bit easier to understand. It says that if a man rapes a woman, he has to marry her. That is a joke. It's a disgrace. It's a shame. God's word does not say anything like that. Amen. Don't get fooled by these false perversions. It's not just a minor difference. Well, you believe that, I believe this. No. That's a huge difference in the Bible. Someone committing fornication versus somebody raping somebody is a world of difference. Amen. God's law is perfect. But this is what the naysayers will say and the, and the, and the mockers will, will turn to to say, see, look at how ridiculous your Bible is. What kind of God is that? And with that, I'd have to agree with them if that's what they said, but that's not what the Bible says. It all, and, and these books are so stupid too because when you read them, it already says that in the previous verse, if a man forces a woman you know, and rapes her, then he's going to be put to death, but not her. It's when a woman committed adultery, right? A man and a woman, they both got put to death. When this guy rapes someone, he gets put to death because it says that he forces her. But then in the next verse is saying, look, then if people who aren't, who aren't married commit fornication, then they have to get married. It's not that difficult to understand. But why would he repeat basically the same thing? And in one instance, it's a death penalty for the man. The other one, he's got to marry her. It, it just doesn't even make any sense.